All right, traders, welcome to today's recap. This is Christian from Hertz Traffic and Trade Group, and it is Wednesday, April 14th. So almost one more one more day, and we are we're at the midpoint of the week. Well, I guess this this is a shortened month, so I guess this is probably the the midpoint. But um, yeah, so let's get to the theme of the day. We'll get to the uh, to the uh, moves for the averages today. Risk disclaimer in front of you. Everything that we're going through is for information purposes only. Not giving out any advice or recommendations. This is for education purposes only. Also, if the video is a little bit blurry, uh, YouTube just takes a while to to render it correctly. So uh, I send out this video like as soon as it's done i don't wait for the high def uh, to be done but it's it's a delay with youtube so uh, be patient and close the video reopen it in an hour and it should be fine all right so what did we what did we have today well we had the s p down 30 basis points which is you know it's kind of a little bit of a, a shock i think for people even though it's down just 30 basis points um the market for april ha has been going up so um you know if you look at the performance for April, which I should have this here someplace, uh, if we look at the SPY percentage change every day since uh, basically 331, right? This is this is the first day since the sixth where we were basically flat that day, where we've actually had a red, you know, the the S and P close uh, down for for the day. So, um, you know. What happens on days like this is, you you know, and, and I think this kind of happened a bit in, um, this happened a bit in March as well, is that you, you kind of just lose your, your muscle memory in of realizing that the market just doesn't go up every day or isn't supposed to go up every day. Uh, I have a tough time. I always have to, you know, kind of rehash that with... Um, with trade with younger traders a bit just letting them know that the market isn't supposed to go up every day unless there's bad news right i think sometimes that's how traders feel like oh we're down today what you know what was the news um well the news is that the market sometimes goes up and it goes and it sometimes go down and it doesn't always have to be a, a specific reason for that uh you'll find if you've been trading for a while in the markets you learn that that's just how it goes right the market um you know isn't it isn't just supposed to go up every day unless there's bad news, right? So I, you just kind of have to realize that. And sometimes when the market ju does go s straight up like this, we kind of forget a little bit. So um, Qs, let's go through the rest of the performance for the day. Qs were down 1.2%. Uh, they gave back a lot of, uh, let's see, where, where, where did where did the Qs finish yesterday? Did they, gave, did they give back all the performance? Uh, let's see. Yeah, basically. So a complete turnaround from what we saw yesterday in the queues. Um, to me, I'm not really surprised by that. You know, I, I think that this move in the queues has been very, very nice, you know, for us to kind of retrace um, and get basically back to very close to uh, to 52 week highs. We'll look at that chart again. But I, I really think that there's that um, we're going to see a much different market as we've seen so, so far, you know, and now we're past the first quarter of of 2021 but I, I really do think that this is a different market than what we saw last year right last year um, there was a number of reasons why the queues just outperformed so much last year um, it was partially it, it, it was there was a couple of reasons for it and I don't want to I don't want to go into that you know in this video um, too much but we know that last year it, you know the country was under lockdown right there was a lot of stay-at-home stocks that did extremely well um, that's going to change. I mean, that's, you know, whether or not it, it's it's a fully reopen or it's partially, it's just not going to see. It's I think it's logical just to realize that you're just not going to see all high growth be the be the constant outperformers. It's going to be more of a mix and match, I, my opinion, again. Um, different today was, was uh, IWM outperformed, finished up 1% for the day. Uh, so that's kind of been lagging. This IWM recently... I think has kind of been the wild card, right? So let me go to IWM first. Um, you can see it did not get out of value. Let's go back to that one hour. So it rallied right up to the top of value for the day and um, and then trailed off. So, you know, this is one of those markets too that, you know, you have to be very cognizant of taking profits here and there, right? If you're looking for home runs, and you know, we said this a lot in March, but 
you know, I don't think it's really a home run market. You know, the way that this market was mo is moving now. Yesterday, I, I thought was a really nice gift with the with the Qs over one percent, but the way that this market has been moving for the most part of, um, you know, of April, it's been more of a kind of grinded out type market, right? And we go back to the if we go back and look at the, some of the days so far in April, you know, you got a couple of days. I mentioned that this was the this was only the second day in April that was red. Uh, but again, not very big days. You know, yesterday the S&P was only up 30 basis points. There's been a couple days here where, you know, the s and is up like 10 basis points, but, um, and a four basis point move here. So it is more of a kind of just grind them out type move where, you know, if you're doing a lot of short-term swing trading, you just want to be cognizant of taking profits here and there. And I'll give you a couple examples in, uh, in a second in that. All right, so that's uh, small caps. And, and again, if we go back to this uh, chart here, this daily chart, I just see a lot of sideways action. Like I think, you know, I hope this is not a head and shoulders pattern, but we don't know yet, right? We won't know if that's a head and shoulders pattern until we break the neckline. So you could speculate all you want. For now, all we know is that we're basically in value and we've been pretty, pretty damn choppy. Um, TLT kind of gave back... Um, uh, looks like it's a doji for the day, down 32 basis points, so not that big of a deal. We'll continue to monitor bonds. I do like to kind of see where they're at uh, during the day, obviously, and, and, you know, see how they finished for the day. Um, yeah, and then, the, you know, the other thing that happened today was obviously this, um, this, uh, this coin uh, IPO that happened today. Yeah, I mean, my opinion on that is, you know, probably a short-term top in the cryptos. Uh, we were talking about this pre-market, and I, I tried to kind of give my view, although it's it's tough to figure out what these names are going to do on IPOs. But whenever we have things that run up, like the cryptos, and I didn't really understand. I'm like, why are the cryptos running up so much into this event? Because, you know, they're just an exchange, right, Coinbase. So I, I didn't really understand the run-up, you know, I, I get that it's a story. So being that they did run up, then they really shouldn't be up there in the first place, you know, as far as that. So if there was a lot of euphoria for the cryptos going into this this IPO, then yeah, it does make sense that it should sell off a bit. Um, so, and I think that's that's what we got. Now, because I, I got a couple of questions about this in the, in the TTG trading room today. And I don't think it's the, the overall top for cryptos, but just you know, they rallied very nicely into this, right? So if we look at Bitcoin, which I don't bring up the Bitcoin chart too much in this, and Ethereum, which I like better than Bitcoin, but I mean, it doesn't really look like a short-term top either in Bitcoin, right? It's just, you know, we got up to 65,000, closed at 62. We're above all the short-term moving averages. You know, I, I don't think, I don't think the cryptos go away. You know, <laughs> um, Ethereum was still up two two percent. I think this is going to be a trend that continues, and and the, the, all these trends are intact. Did they get a little bit ahead of themselves and a little bit too euphoric going into this Coinbase IPO? Probably, right? This is this is not a reach. Any of these things that that I'm saying, right? And we, I always go back to trading. You know, something that I've learned over my you know twenty plus twenty year career is that it's many times it's buy the rumor, sell the news. Right, uh, and I think you know these IPOs are a little are being done a little bit differently than how they used to be. It seems like they want to just bring them out at like close to the to the as, as high as prices you could possibly get them. They are pairing an order book, um, but it just seems like you know the the early investors always get rewarded. The ones who have to kind of buy in the secondary market. It's not as good of a price, and especially if they don't bring, you know, if they bring this, if they keep moving the price higher and higher and higher, it seems like the longer that they wait to bring these IPOs out, like during the day, the higher the price is going to go. So, I don't know. It's it's a complicated uh, it's a complicated game. The IPO market. I I literally don't do much in it because the ones who make the money are the early investors in this market, in the, in for the most part in the IPO market. All right, uh, so that's I wanted to just give my give a couple thoughts on that, and we'll see how that name trades. So um, sector wise, and the VIX was up a little bit today. Um, let's talk a little bit before we go into the sectors. I wanted to just 
bring up the S and P chart here for a second, right? So here's you know we, we looked at this we looked at the um, the S and P performance in, in a table format on Bloomberg. Um, also, if you look at this in terms of the daily chart, right? We're stretched. Uh, you know, the, we've been talking about this for a couple days. Um, notice that the volume was a little bit bigger. Again, there's always a misconception that I see on on Twitter about volume. This is when volume picks up on market turns, right? So we don't know if we didn't lose the short-term moving average, but we're pretty close, right? But you could see the volume, right? So again, it's always low volume as it's as we're marching up, and then on the market turns, we get the volume. Right? And you could look at any rally over time, and that's the majority of the case. Here's another example, right? Low volume. Oh my God, it's low volume. It's low volume. That's how it should be. <laughs> um, and then when the market turns, you get high volume, right? So again, if you're, right, because I always get this, uh, these debates that people like to debate me on. Oh, well, today was, a, you know, we rallied, but it was on low volume. It's always the case. So, um, study and you know all you have to do is, is just look at the S&P chart over the last couple of years look at any time that we've had a nice swing up and look at the volume it's never a big volume move <laughs> when when you're in this right when you know when you're gliding up like this all right so let's let's zoom back in all right so so we got higher than normal volume right and then again it, you know we don't know yet if it's kind of marking a, a little bit of a short-term top um, but what I see here and it's funny because we talked about this in the Q&A session right so we, we talked about how that we did not have a sell signal <laughs> and then by the time we got to the end of the Q&A session uh, there was a little bit of volatility uh, that hit the tape and if you look at this right so it's basically um, you know the price action just has been uh, up and to the right of the screen Right, but we're we've now for the first time we're kind of testing back. You know, we're we're now below these these short-term moving averages. So unless we happen to see another green bar like this, right, we we might be this this might be a little bit of a short-term top in the market, right? And we might start to go sideways, right? And again, it doesn't mean that we go crashing down. It could just mean that we go sideways and we do a whole you know there's a whole bunch of different um, scenarios from here. But again. If you look at what we've been doing for the last couple of weeks, at some point this was inevitable, right? That we kind of come back in. Um, all right. So again, here's all, here's the price action since all the way back, you know, towards the towards the very end of March. Right. We've been moving up here, so you know this might be a little bit of a move down. Don't forget, we've got option expiration on Friday too. Sometimes that happens too as we get to you know monthly option expiration. Um, price action stalls out a little bit. Okay, so what are the adjustments to be to be making? Well, I'll go through a couple trades that. Um, let me just bring this over here. As always, I go over all my trades, good or bad, no matter what in the in the trading room so one of the things that we talked about in the pre-market session this morning is putting on a little bit of a hedge right and i explained this trade in detail um, there is a higher amount of risk than reward in this trade this is called a credit uh, this is a credit call spread so it's a bearish trade right it's a bearish trade we talked about the pre-market session um, what I'm doing is I'm thinking that, hey, we're, we're overbought here. We're hitting earnings season, uh, which I think is, a, is more of a choppy time frame. So I'm selling premium, right? I'm thinking that we're not going to go up another. Now, I could be wrong, but I'm thinking that we're not going to go up another 2% here. And um, I actually took some profits on this already, this trade. And, I, and I'll put it back on if we end up rallying, uh, because I think the, the end of the month is going to get a little bit more difficult. Uh, because we've got, you know, I think earning season is the main reason for me because we, we, as the market is processing new information, sometimes it goes sideways. Not all the time, but sometimes it goes sideways. Um, and then we also have uh, option expiration. So that's why I threw, I haven't put one of these trades on in a long time, but I just th thought with the RSI around 73 in the S&P, you know, again, over 70 is overbought, that it was the time to do this trade. Okay, so we've got a nice hedge on uh, for the rest for the remainder of the month. All right, and then a couple other things that I tried today just didn't work. Um, you know, Skyworks was setting up very nicely. Oh, let me go over the performance, uh, the sector performance too. 
And I thought there was a couple interesting, you know, so first of all, breath was, uh, and, and the NICE was strong for the better part of the day. Here's what the, how the market breath finished for the day. Um, you could see actually something that was different was NASDAQ uh, advancers beat the decliners today. Also in the S&P, the advancers beat the decliner today. Dow Jones was even, even 15 apiece. Um, but you have to just realize there's been a lot more, um, you know, so today, again, just like one day wasn't a trend, one, uh, just like yesterday wasn't a trend either because it's just one day, but today's not a trend either. And what we what the trend has been is been, you know, there's been an increase in new lows, uh, new four week lows that we've seen in both the NASDAQ um, and the S&P. Again, we don't, we didn't see that today, um, but I've seen that more, I've, that's been the trend over the last week. So um, that just, to, and again, that was another reason for me putting on that um, that hedge, right? Um, what did do particularly well today? A lot of the metals and mining, a lot of the material names. Um, also oil, you know, which has gotten pretty beaten up. The oil names bounced pretty decently today. Uh, the oil services ETF was up 5%. Um, XOP, which is the equally weighted energy uh Oil and gas ETF was up 4%. XME, which I'm a bigger fan of than, than the energy, uh, was up 3.3% for the day. Steel was also up. So a lot, like I said, a lot of material names. Biotech was a welcome bounce today. Uh, you know, I, I put out a, a couple charts this morning and I said, hey, you know, if the S&P continues to glide higher, then perhaps that we could see a bounce in some of the underperformers like biotech and maybe the Chinese internet names. Did not happen in the Chinese internet names, uh, but it did happen in biotech today. Um, and then the banks were strong today off of uh, off of earnings. Okay, so those so let's let's examine a couple charts in here. Um, software gave back uh, some gains uh, before I go into the charts here. Of course, blockchain was down as the as it usually works. Sell the news. And a few other stocks that have been outperformers recently. Uh, clean energy still cannot find uh, a bottom yet and uh, in those particular names. So um, I mentioned I would go over some star performers. I thought U.S. Steel, we, we were talking about this. One of the traders in the Tribeca Trade Group uh, mentioned U.S. Steel yesterday is uh, ripe for a bounce. Well, you got that um, after multiple red days. Um, Cliff's Resources also came into support. It's a CLF. You know, nice bounce today. And things like Alcoa, which reports tomorrow. Uh, then really, you know, I really like the chemical space. So CC uh, finished close to the highs today, up 2.9% today. Uh, then if we look at things like OLN is close to breaking out. Uh, DuPont had a decent day today. Um, I went along some Dow stock today. Ah, oh, did not close above value. So close. Um, so I might have to revisit that trade for tomorrow. Again, very. it's always very tricky putting on swing trades in the middle of the day because you just don't know how they're going to finish. And if you don't know if uh, a signal that you're seeing throughout the day, if that's going to materialize and actually um, close that way by the time we get to the, to the end of the day. Uh, but I do like this group. Um, and then also what was particularly strong was the, um, was the agriculture group too, Mosaic, uh, CF, right? CF Industries, great initials, by the way, there. Um, you know, and a couple other names within these groups. So, you know, that's kind of what has been going on with this market is that, you know, the, these ro these sector rotations, which I view as very strong, right? It, when when the S&P just continues to, to glide higher and we're seeing all these groups not necessarily break down, but rest and then rally, rest and rally, rest another group rallies, rest another group rallies, um, it's been very strong. So, you know, we'll kind of just have to monitor what I what I talked about in the beginning of of this video about you know the S and P kind of breaking the short term trend a little bit, but it doesn't mean that you're not going to be able to make money in this market. I think you just have to be pickier and choosier, right? While this particular while we lose the upside momentum a bit, all right. Um, and then also means you know what like we talked about in the member video yesterday, you know with as we saw as we've been seeing a breath divergence, right? That um, you know, holding less positions versus more, right? And that's that's just, uh, you know, basic trading, guys. Um, you know, again, I, I think it's important. 
Um, I gave the analogy yesterday in, in yesterday's video about, you know, uh, a trader kind of is kind of like a pilot of a plane, right? A pilot has to make adjustments, right? If the breath is, if if the market starts to do something different, you have to make adjustments, right? If um, generally speaking, if you come in and try to do the same thing every day without looking at the market conditions, you're going to have a very hard time at this game, right? So so making adjustments is paramount, okay? Um, you know, meaning as the market rallies, you take you know you take more profits. Right, so you know this has been a great month so far in in April, and I think you just kind of have to recognize that um, and be patient with the rest of the month as we get into earnings season. Okay, so that's that's my um, that's my thoughts for the for the day. Um, you could see a couple of trades that I tried. I thought Skyworks was looking really good here, pre you know right around the beginning of the day, um, but it had no follow through. So you know a couple of trades. You know I also thought Deer could go today. Um, I just decided to take it off really quickly. Uh, after you know about 30 minutes after the trade because uh, may uh, 390 calls is just too much premium right so if you if you get the move right away so be it if not i'm not sitting with you know may you know premium for for 10 bucks so i got out of that trade pretty quickly um here is the hedge trade that we talked about pre-market um, i put on a tiny bit of cliffs today i wanted to participate um, and that's basically it you know I tried a, one more trade at the end of the day, which which didn't work. I got caught in that last move, um, restoration hardware. And I always say this, right? You could try some trades midday, right? This thing, even on the on this hour bar, right? By the time this bar closed, <laughs> it it failed, right? And you know, there's nothing wrong with this name, but I'm trading this short term. In fact, this was supposed to be a day trade, but it did not close above value, which is six o eight. All right, a couple other names um, that we, you know, that I got a lot of, um, you know, uh, that people were talking about today in, in the in the trading room, which I'll share some charts and, and opinions. But um, GameStop was one of them, right? And what we said in the trading room was, um, watch this this 169, 170 level, right? So the market value, you know, the market webs, which is a proprietary Tribeca trade group indicator did exactly what we wanted it to do or you know told us exactly where you should be taking profits for the day in GameStop right right at that 169 level right also if you look at the five minute time frame notice we tagged that um, virgin point of control right which is from this mark uh, from this value area back here boom right right to the high point so if you're now, so that was a great place to take profits right around that 169, 170 level. If you are looking for continuation in this name, wait until it gets back above that level. All right. Um, another, I, I heard a lot of people talking about Palantir, PLTR, right? I've been joking around how this thing stays in the 23 to 25 range. Well, look at where this thing got to today. Right? I told people in the trading room. Watch the top of value, 2581. And I said, I really don't want anything to do with this company until it breaks out of its range. Notice what it did today. It failed at the top of value. So 2581 was a great place to take profits. Okay, not to, you know, not to get all bulled up on the name. Um, one more name too was Goldman. All right, where did Goldman stop for the day? You know, hit top of value. Um, take a look at the um, Virgin Point of Control here, right? Isn't that amazing? <laughs> um, this indicator is still, I've been using this for, for three, four years now, and it still amazes me. Um, it tagged that Point of Control, right? So if we go into our indicator and turn on the market profile, uh, market profile, sorry. All right, you can see how we derive this. All right, so this was the point of control for the previous period. All right, so you could see all that volume here. All right, so high volume areas the, where they haven't been revisited, the market likes to return to them. But bam, do we? <laughs> uh, it's you know to to the to the penny uh, that the indicator basically called the top um, for the day in it. Now, again, it's, these are just short-term tops. Like there was another one that was taken out here that that was the, the top of for last week. So keep an eye on this 345 level if you like Goldman Sachs. 
All right, guys, that is it for today's video. Have a great night. See you tomorrow.